Good morning. It's Iowimala, and it's Friday, March the 26th, and we're having another kind of overcast day, so typical spring, I think, for northern Illinois. Um, well, lots of people are having reactions, I know now, to the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, mild, kind of flu-like for a few days symptoms. I'm feeling much better from uh, what I think was a combination of a cold coming on immediately before I got my second vaccine. So I think the combination of that kind of knocked me. But uh, I'm feeling much better and feeling really glad that I've got had both of the vaccines. And now um, other family members seem to be getting theirs. and. <clears throat> it's a good feeling to know that there is movement in the right direction finally, right? So please be vaccinated. Think of others as well as yourself. And uh, don't be afraid if you have the side effects. I think it's good to give yourself at least a day or two after the vaccine to have kind of an easy schedule if you can do that so you can rest. I'm going to read more in Gold Dust, Collecting Gold Dust. There's a lot coming up today, um, lots of classes, and I heard I didn't, I didn't read, I guess I didn't read it carefully enough, the Theosophical Society, uh, John Chiantiosi and Ajahn Brahm had a, uh, there is a recorded interview that the two of them had together, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that because it will be in their, uh, they archive all of their Thursday night programs, and I had missed that one completely. So I'll really want to be watching that today. Tomorrow, Saturday, early evening, I think it's five, five o'clock Central, six Eastern, we're doing another of the Sutta studies online with, uh, there are about 20 monks, and I think now there are about three bhikkhunis too, so the, the, our, our numbers are getting better, and I think we're still going to be working this time with questions on the Metta Sutta and people's practice, and uh, people have an opportunity to, to uh, ask those questions and then someone in the group will answer the question or maybe there'll be different answers so so that's uh that'll be the fourth sutta study in a row with still focusing on the metta sutta and metta practice so it's that's uh the information is very good and it's from all over the world and different really um, a lot of very senior teachers so hope you can join that too so, let's get started, and I'd like to read, I'd like to begin with Pema Chodron's, it's like an invocation, so we'll begin with this and we'll end sending merit out. And we'll read from Gold Dust for a little bit and then have time to sit. May Bodhicitta, precious and sublime, Arise where it has not yet arisen, and where it has arisen may it never fail, but grow and flourish ever more and more. I have to make one little adjustment. Okay. So today... How to work with difficulties. So we just have been going through um, how how the what the defilements are and how to work with them and how to use the eightfold path to work with them. The last thing I read here's here are the last two sentences. Three exercise right view and remembering that this defilement is not you. 
the defilement will express the amount of power it has, and you can't prevent that. Just step back and keep an eye on the defilement consistently and patiently. Learning and figuring out how it functions and its job description. This is a learning process. So that takes patience sometimes. We want to deal with something immediately or we don't want to deal with it at all and we want to forget about it immediately. How to work with difficulties. How can we view the world through the lens of Dhamma? With a big D. When we are thinking about the world, we are, think we are already thinking about concepts. We are thinking about people, places, and situations. When the mind pays attention to concepts, either wholesome or unwholesome states of mind will come up, depending on how much wisdom we have. I've noticed that when yogis observe defilements, it is often from a point of view that they are enemies to be fought. That is already a battle lost. Defilements like it when you fight, because fighting in itself is a defilement, and they like that they have a spy in your camp. Fighting anger with anger gets you more anger, or anger squared. Defilements cannot stand it when you watch them calmly. When you accept a defilement's presence, take interest in it, and try to understand it, that's when the defilement becomes really uncomfortable. For me, I understood that difficulties would decrease if I practice mindfulness. I noticed that the intensity of suffering and problems would decrease when I practiced. Truly understanding this motivate, motivated me to continue. When real understanding is present and strong, the mind changes for the better. If wisdom isn't strong enough, the mind can't change because defilements still arise. There are people who know about meditation, but they don't practice. For these people, their minds do not really change. Depression drove me to practice wholeheartedly at home. I remember first trying many ways to alleviate these feelings. I went everywhere that I had ever been and explored new places seeking happiness, but the depression followed me everywhere. I couldn't find happiness when I went out with my friends, whether I went to the beach or to the mountains, or when I went thrill-seeking elsewhere. Nothing made me happy. Even drugs couldn't do the job. It finally occurred to me one day that if I were to go to the moon, the, pre the depression would also follow me there. During this period in my life, <clears throat> my suffering became a very obvious object of meditation. I watched until it became unbearable, and then I changed the object to something neutral to continue being aware. In Myanmar, Anapanasati, which is awareness of the breath, was used as a common neutral object, but it was too subtle for me at the time because the suffering was so strong. I needed something stronger to make my breath obvious. I found the answer in a Vicks nasal inhaler because I found that when I used the inhaler, my attention would be at my nostrils. When it comes to using wisdom, I'm not asking you to think of a solution or to resolve the situation by thinking. That's not what I'm saying. Thinking a little allows us to practice effectively. I see it as a considered practice where you are aware and you reflect a little bit on what you're doing, how you're doing it, and what you're discovering. When we do our work, we consider whatever work we have done before and how we accomplish this kind of work so we can figure out the best way to move forward. None of us do work without considering how to do it the best way possible. Even when we're trying to fix something we are not yet familiar with, we may tinker with it, 
take time to reflect, check what is happening, see whether it is working, and then tinker a bit more. That is what I meant by using wisdom in using our own intelligence to find our way in our own practice. If any of the Brahma Vihadas or the sublime states of loving kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, and equanimity arise, the mind will feel good and we will feel at peace and ease and understanding of the way things are. If there is compassion without wisdom, that compassion might actually be contaminated because it is mixed up with a non-acceptance of what actually is. A feeling of helplessness will be in there. If that happens, you will need to clear the mind first. Come back to observing the unwholesome mind state with right view. Do not try to force yourself to have equanimity. Work with the unwholesome states that arise until the mind comes to some balance. Then you will recognize whether it is any of the Brahma Vihadas arising in the mind. Don't let go of mindfulness. When I was deep in depression and I began to try practicing at home initially, I watched all my difficult emotions and it became a very strong motivation to keep awareness in, in order to get better. As soon as it got better, I would leave, lose, excuse me, as soon as it got better, I would lose the motivation to be as mindful. I would revert back to my old ways, talking and joking with neighbors and neighboring shops or customers then some trigger would hit me really hard or hit a sore point that brought up all the old anxieties, fear, guilt, or shame, and I became overwhelmed again. Watching all the old fears and feelings would alleviate it a bit. But when it got better, I forgot again. It felt like people were coming by and slapping or hitting or punching me mentally. It was not intentional on their part, it was just that my mind was not strong enough to be resilient. Over many months, seeing the mind trigger daily and easily, I began to think. I began to think about why I kept going back into this cycle. I suffered through this many, many times. I then realized that I was becoming too relaxed and not being mindful enough. When I began to feel better, I thought, I can't stop being mindful. Even when I was feeling better and there was nothing to do, I would not waste my time talking needlessly, and I would always be mindful of something or other. I became prepared when people came to talk to me. Other people can be full of defilements too, and they come and unload their defilements on us. If we are not ready, we get affected and infected. Even with family members, I began to realize that I could not just relax. I could not drop mindfulness. My mindfulness got better and more continuous. This is how we learn from life. Our failures and difficulties teach us. Reviewing what goes on in the mind is the work of wisdom. Reviewing what has happened. My teacher would always ask how I was practicing, and that is what I'm asking you now. What are you doing? Or what is special or different today? Were questions my teacher would ask me. Yogis who are practicing will know the answer, while those who are not practicing will not know. Reviewing what goes on in the mind is the work of wisdom. At first, when we watch anger, we are just watching. Reviewing what has happened sets a direction for the mind and creates a map of sorts for future awareness. You have a situation that you consider from different angles and, to try, and to decide to try med meditating a certain way the next time. When the next time comes, you are more likely to remember to try it that different way. If you forget, 
set an intention to try again the next time. When you play a game with the same scenario occurring again and again, you become an expert at knowing ahead of time what moves are beneficial and what are not at certain junctions. This is so good. I want to just keep reading, but that's enough to just chew on for a while. I hope you can uh, uh, get this book because I think it's, you can just pick it up any time and uh, get something beneficial from it. Collecting Gold Dust by Sayadaw Ute Jania. So, there's so much to think about. And it's really talking, too, about this being mindful continuously. Um, I feel like that's hopefully been a lot of what this last year has been for me. And I hope it will continue to be that way. And being mindful continuously doesn't mean we're being like the uh, super person the whole time. But we're certainly watching ourselves more and catching those defilements. So sometimes it's not always that pleasant to see, to see all the defilements that arise. Uh, but it's better to see them and be aware of them and uh, keep watching them than it is to just cover them up or uh, not, not be working with them. And I love what he says about um, at the very beginning of that reading, that, the, that we have to be, um, we don't, we have to not fight with our defilements because just that act of getting angry with them or thinking that we're going to fight them is uh, that they've won already. We've created more defilements. And that's the kind of, that's a very interesting part of this is when we, when we can start working with the defilements without without being so angry at them or without being so uh, willing to push them aside and not, not watch them. So, so much of it we have to let go of our ego and back away and then just see what's arising and be patient, be patient with ourselves. But being patient doesn't mean we're pushing things away from us. It means we are patiently watching and being aware of uh, the things that come up that we're, we're maybe just not happy about seeing in our own, uh, in our thoughts, in our behavior, in our actions, um, the things that make us feel, oh, I could, be, I could be happier if I could let this go. I could feel better. I could enjoy, I could enjoy life if I could let that drop away. So... We have time to sit a little bit, and then I can get back to watching my squirrels and feeding them. There's so many of them out there. <laughs> um, so why don't we sit a little, and then when I have to go, I'll close my part with the sharing of merits, and then we can, then if you can keep sitting, please do. And if you're getting on with your day or maybe getting on with your evening or going to bed, that's great too. So just allow your body to, to find that posture. You're letting your body know by doing this, by getting into a certain posture. Doesn't matter where it is, but your body begins to to know, oh, okay, now my the body, she's getting this body the way it needs to go so it, the body can stay awake, stay attentive, because the body knows this is a special time. And what, what we're, you know, what our goal is to be aware, have the body have this awareness all the time. So when we're sitting, we're doing walking meditation and we're calling it meditation, that's just the training for uh, 
getting our body to be mindful all the time. We can't, until we do it continuously, and we, do, we can't slip away from it. So be aware of the body breathing. As you let your body, let your back feel straight. Find a position where you can feel grounded, connected to the earth. Relax your hands. Begin with a few deep breaths in and out, if that helps to let your body know to relax. Then come back to, to just the natural breath. This breath is such a gift. You can scan through your body. Just be aware of how the body feels. moving through your body. <clears throat> With an awareness. Feel connected to yourself. Feel that this is all the body. Then we come back to our breath as our anchor. Mindfulness is present, be aware of that. See if you can experience mindfulness without any ego, without me, mine, I. Be mindful without anything being personal.
Keep coming back to the breath whenever your mind begins to wonder, to wander. Just gently come back to your breath. Be aware of the beautiful silence. We can create that silence within us. It isn't dependent on the noise outside. Stay with the subtlety of your breath, the subtle sensations. I'll have to end now. I think I've taken up more than my regular time. It feels so good sitting with you. May the actions that we take towards the good, toward understanding ourselves, toward being more peaceful, be of benefit to all beings everywhere. Have a beautiful day. I'll see you Sunday morning, and thank you so much for being part of my practice.